It is now time for the National Car Rental Story of the Week, and that story is Microsoft trying again to Mm -hmm. get into the always-connected Windows PC market. Yes. This is the general notion that your computer has a persistent connection. In other words, you fire it up, you're not waiting for the Wi-Fi to kick in, or more specifically in this case, for the LTE, the the actual mobile broadband to kick in. It is just there even, in this case, when the computer is closed. Yeah, right. Like a cell phone. Yeah, absolutely. So the first of these devices have gotten into the hands of reviewers. And I would say that the reviews so far are mixed. What do you think of this concept based on what you're seeing out there? Uh, First of all, I wanted to ask you, so you're saying Microsoft's doing this, but it seems like this is really, I don't don't know who's leading it, but all of these always connected PCs are powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon Snapdragon processors. processors. That's right. So is this not a Qualcomm initiative or is it a Microsoft initiative or is it both? The way this stuff works in the PC industry in particular, and and we were talking about Macs in the previous segment, whereas Apple is driving the train there, clearly, and Mm -hmm. increasingly more so because they're making the chips and potentially the screens, as we were talking about. Microsoft relies heavily on partnerships, and depending on the initiative, Microsoft or one of its partners may be driving it more. This seems like a pretty equal partnership between Microsoft and Qualcomm, which, as you said, makes the Snapdragon processors that are very popular and actually really the the de facto standard in smartphones. Yes. And also the PC makers. So in this case, for example, one of the devices that was reviewed is the the Asus Nova Go convertible. And that's going to cost about $600. It'll be available in the U.S. on May 1st. But to me, it's it's more of a partnership. And that's really the model that Microsoft has pursued over the years for better and for worse. Because there's something to be said for one company having the vision and really controlling it. Sure. So with this, um, I like the idea. And so I, I haven't used them to be able to like give a you know an opinion on is this specific device good or bad, but the idea of a PC that as soon as you hit the power button it turns on just like your smartphone you just hit the power button it, there's no boot up there's no wake from resume from deep sleep or any of that you press a button instant on it's been connected the whole time that the screen has been off so any emails or any messages or anything are already there so there's not the whole let me power it on now i'm going through a quick download session of everything 24 hours or more battery life so you're using a a very efficient processor you're not using a you know an intel um, core i7 you're using a snapdragon processor which though can still do some heavy lifting all of that combined to me sounds like something I would want in my in my per- personal computing. Um, but what what a lot of these look like they're doing though is they're more of a tablet, kind of like what we were just talking about in the earlier segment. They're more like tablets with a keyboard. So if they're a clamshell, they're really they're really tablets and not really what you would consider to be a traditional PC. What do you think of that? Yeah, and, and that also gets into the apps, which are essentially limited um, That in that this is a processor that's made for smartphones. And so right. the, the, in terms of the architecture, they're not able to run the full catalog of Windows apps. And so that is another struggle. And that's the kind of thing that Microsoft has struggled with going all the way back to, I hate to say the word. Uh-oh, No. Windows RT. Oh, no. Panos yeah. Panay. <laughs> what have you done? Exactly. So <laughs> that is the head of Microsoft Surface and hardware business, and we've had some history there in terms of him on the show. Uh, good, good good and bad history. It's, it's all good. Um, so uh, Andrew was in the audience for one of those shows, yes. I think, is what you're alluding yes, I to. Was. Yes. folks. And I think you want uh, P- Panos to, to answer the questions more directly, I think. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. Well, you asked him a question about, hey, I had this Windows RT, uh, is not even a laptop, device. Yeah. And why all doesn't of a it work anymore? It yeah. stopped running apps. Yeah. Why? Yeah. So hopefully this is not a similar issue where you buy one of these always connected PCs. By the way, that name is silly. I don't want to always have to say that. There needs to be a better, more succinct name. Um, but buy one of these, and then a couple years later, you know, on day one it doesn't run the full catalog of apps, and you know, two years later it doesn't run any apps, or you know, yeah. the apps are less. So specifically, just to get into the technical details, Windows on Snapdragon, it's a 32-bit platform. So if you're running, trying to run a 64-bit app, which many of them out there are, you're gonna, you're not going to be able to that's do not it. So work. that that's okay. that's the main issue that's being reported. So. Okay. 
really that kind of limitation is what can tank this kind of platform. So when you go into it, you have to know what you're getting into. Yeah. With things like Windows 10S, which we talked about before, that's specifically from the Microsoft store, right. the, the, those apps. So, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see if this takes off. I'm still waiting for the big Windows innovation that gets folks, you know, really excited about Windows again. What would that be? Uh, you know, they've tried things with, like, Beam uh, or Mixer, the, the the online game streaming mm-hmm. that they've done. I think that's a possibility. I think the connection to the Xbox. I don't know. I Just, just something new. Maybe it's AR, VR, HoloLens. I don't know. They, they're trying. They're trying. Right. And, uh, and, and I think they've got the attention of some folks, but nothing that's redefining the industry in terms of Windows. I I think Microsoft is a little more focused right now on the cloud and enterprise apps and that sort of thing. Yeah, this is very interesting though. Seeing, you know, this is not possible. Like this is a this is a a step towards the future. This isn't the future. It's a step towards. Um 5G is a couple of years away and when 5G is available and you have a mobile processor in these always connected PCs that connects to 5G where you're not always having to hunt for a good connection. 5G is a ga- that's the game changer. And then when devices connect to the 5G network, that's when we're going to see I think real change, real possibility. This also leads me back to Apple though and makes me think, what if Apple took an A11 processor and put that into a MacBook running macOS? The A11 processor inside of the current iPad Pro outperforms the MacBook. Huh. It out, It's faster. It's okay. faster at 4K video editing. That's why I asked you earlier, like, what if they just put a keyboard on the iPad Pro? Because the iPad Pro is faster than their entry-level notebook. So putting that A11 processor in there, which is another ARM processor, which is similar to the Snapdragon, the ARM processor, mobile processor architecture, um, these processors are getting... In, in many instances, not all, but in many instances and use cases, better than the Intel processors. So are you ready to buy one of these? Always always connected PCs? I think, you know, if you're the business traveler, always on the go, if you run, like a lot of business travelers now run their lives from their phones. Yeah. So in that case, you're not relying on these big 64-bit you know, uh, apps for Windows anyway, because you're running your business from your BlackBerry or whatever. If you need a PC and something better, this is a good thing because you have 20, the battery life, 24 hours battery life. So if you're going to fly from here to New York and back, you're only using 50% battery. Like that, that's crazy. So I think there is a market here. It's just not, this isn't where, this isn't the end of where we're going. So, and, and really the end or the next big destination is 5G. Yes, 5G is that's going to be the killer app. And that's essentially the next generation of wireless connectivity yes. that just basically opens up the pipe. Absolutely, yes. Much that's, bigger. It's crazy, yes. All right, that is the National Car Rental Story of the Week. We will be right back with our final segment on this week's Geared Up. 